The Lord's been good to me. you glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time on this first Sunday in the month of July I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord come on let's give God some glory this morning let's give him the highest praise Sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Let everything, let everything, everything that has breath praise. worship. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Oh God, you've allowed us to see the first Sunday in a brand new month. And we say thank you, Lord, for keeping us, for bringing us together one more time. If we had we couldn't thank you enough for all the ways you've healed us, for all the ways you've comforted us, for all the ways you've provided for us, for all the ways and all the times you've forgiven us. Oh God, we pause and we say thank you. We thank you for this worship experience, oh God. And we thank you for the preached word. We ask that you open our hearts and our minds even now to hear you, to feel you, to see you even in this worship experience. Help us not to leave the sanctuary of our homes, of this church. Help us not to leave this experience the same way in which we came. Be with us now as we enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. Bless us and keep us, oh God. And we will be ever so careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, good morning, We Street. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Come on, lift your hands wherever you are, in your living room, in your car, in your house. We give God a great praise for being the risen Savior. Death could not hold him down. He is the risen King. So we're going to sing this simple song. Come on, we've come to declare that God is the risen Savior, that death could not hold him down, and that he has won the victory for all of us when he died on the cross, and on the third day he rose from the dead. Song is real 
simple goes like this.
Come on, sing that one voice. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. a hallelujah praise in your spirit. I don't know about you, but who can proclaim victory? Victory is indeed ours. And I'm so glad. Listen, we have made it through half of the year. And this is a reason to celebrate on this first Sunday in July. I'm so glad that death could not hold him down. I'm so glad this morning that we have sweet victory. We may be outnumbered. We may be overwhelmed. We might be at a disadvantage, but we have sweet victory in Jesus. Amen and amen. In church family, we want to make sure that you feel welcome in this virtual worship experience. For those that are visiting online for the first time, we invite you to type in visitor on the comment section on YouTube Live and on Facebook Live as well. And we have ministers, we have deacons, we have an entire church body that is ready to welcome you with open arms. Let's go ahead and make sure that we greet each other right now so that we can feel so that we can feel the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in this space. I don't know about you this morning, but I can feel the love of God even behind the computer screen, even behind the TV screen. It is good for us to be able to fellowship with one another in spirit and 
stand in truth. We have reached that time within the worship experience. It's a time where we can all participate. We have that moment of giving. It's now time for our tithes and our offering. This is God's financial plan for God's church and for God's people. We thank you so much for your generosity. It has enabled us to continue to be a beacon of light within this community that we are called to serve. There are a number of ways that you can give and participate in giving. You can go to the church website at www.wearewheatstreet.org or you can use your mobile device and go to the Eat Tithe app right there on your cell phone. Or you can simply text the number 404-609-0111. That's on your screen. And you can also mail in your tithes and your offerings to the church. Let's listen to the words of the Lord coming from Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 10. And there it reads, Give generously to him and do so without a grudging heart. Then because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in everything you put your hand to. Amen. Let us prepare to go to God in prayer. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we come just saying thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord God. Thank you for starting us on our way. We thank you, Lord God, for those who gave, Lord God, and those who had the desire to give, Lord God, but couldn't. We ask, Lord God, that you have it pressed down, shake it together, and run it over, Lord God. We come thanking you, Lord God, just for being Yahweh, Lord God, just for being Jehovah Jireh, Lord God, for being Jehovah Nisi, Lord God. We thank you for the unconditional love you give us each and every day. We thank you for your blood, Lord God. We thank you for your oil, Lord God. We just know, Lord God, if we had a thousand times, we couldn't thank you enough, Lord God. We thank you for covering us with your blood, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, just for continuing to give us breath in our lungs, Lord God. Clothes on our back, Lord God. Shoes on our feet, Lord God. We thank you for all you continue to do for us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, just for what you're about to bless us with in this season. So we come just saying thank you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My God is awesome. Oh, yeah. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Praise His holy name. Say, my God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Hide me from the rain. My God. Is, My God is awesome. Heals me when. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weak. Praise His holy name. Praise His holy name. One more time. My God. In the valley, hide me from the rain. To my God. Oh. 
How many know that God is awesome today? That we serve an awesome God. God is awesome. 
we give God praise on this Independence Sunday, this 4th of July. I pray that as you watch this service, you're not already full from a barbecue and uh, already full from a good meal. I know it's early in the morning, but I, I'm glad today that I'm free. I'm glad today that it was not the Constitution that set me free. It was not the Declaration of Independence that set me free. It was not the Emancipation Proclamation that set me free. But I'm free today because of Jesus, who declared that whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. How many today are glad today to be free? Glad to have liberty. Where there's liberty, there is the Holy Spirit. We give praise and honor to God, and we certainly honor this Sunday, Independence Sunday. I'll call your attention to the book of Daniel. Daniel, the 10th chapter. And for our reading today, we shall read verses 1 through 14. The prophecy of Daniel chapter 10, I'll be reading out of the New International Reader's Version, and it reads as thus. It was the third year that Cyrus, the king of Persia, ruled over Babylon. At that time, I was living in Babylon. There, the people called me Belteshazzar. A message from God came to me. It was true. It was about a great war. I had a vision that showed me what it meant. At that time, I was very sad. For three weeks, I did not eat any rich food. No meat or wine touched my lips. I didn't use any lotions at all until three weeks were over. I was standing on the bank of the great Tigris River. It was the 24th day of the first month. I looked up and saw a man dressed in linen clothes. He had a belt around his waist. It was made out of fine gold from Euphaz. His body gleamed like topaz. His face shone like lightning. His eyes were like flaming torches. His arms and legs were as bright as polished bronze. And his voice was like the sound of a large crowd. I was the only one who saw the vision. The people who were with me did not see it. But they were so terrified that they ran and hid. So I was left alone as I was watching this great vision. I felt so weak, my face turned pale as death and I was helpless. Then I heard the man speak and I listened to him. I fell sound asleep, my face towards the ground. A hand touched me, it pulled me up on my hands and knees. I began to tremble with fear. The man said, Daniel, you are highly respected. Think carefully about what I'm going to say to you and stand up. God has sent me to you. Then he said that I trembled as I stood up. He continued, don't be afraid, Daniel. You've decided to get more understanding. You made yourself humble as you worship your God. Since the first day you did those things, your words were heard. I have come to give you an answer, but the prince of Persia opposed me for 21 days. Then Michael came to help me. He is the leader of the angels. He helped me win the battle over the king of Persia. Now I've come to explain the vision to you. I will tell you what will happen to your people. The vision shows what will take place in days to come. I want to tag this text, winning our spiritual battles from within. Winning our spiritual battles from within. In a recent article in Surfer's Magazine, I know that many under the sound of my voice have a subscription to Surfer's Magazine. Uh, there was an interesting article uh, uh, to inform surfers around the world uh, that if a shark was to ever attack them, 
that the best thing to do is to hit the shark right in between its eyes. That's the best thing to do if you're ever attacked by a shark while surfing. One day, a surfer who had read that article was out on the Great Barrier Reef and he was attacked by a great white shark and he remembered uh, that article and he began to punch the great white shark dead in between its eyes. And the article says that if the shark does not move and continues to attack to keep on punching the shark right in between its eyes. And that's what that surfer did and eventually with blood surrounding the waters that shark retreated. I've learned that's what happens when we fight our spiritual battles. Whenever we pray, whenever we fast, whenever we worship, whenever we praise God, whenever we give our tithe, uh, whenever we choose to bless God and not focus on our current circumstances, we're punching Satan dead between the eyes over and over again. This story represents, and the story of David, uh, Daniel rather, represents uh, spiritual warfare. It allows us to get a glimpse that God works both in our physical area as well as in the spiritual realm. Uh, the Lord opened the eyes of Elijah's servant to see the host of God's army. His spiritual eyes were open to see the welfare, warfare around him. Only Daniel in this text sees the angel standing uh, before him. And the Bible tells us that Daniel felt in terror. Uh, Daniel was granted great access to see and to hear and to speak spiritually and to communicate with angels. Uh, these examples clearly uh, demonstrate that God is working in an invisible spiritual realm. The Lord has provided angels to fight our battles. Uh, God loves us so much uh, that he works both physically and spiritually. Uh, God works uh, and fight our battles in the spirit as well as in the physical. God sends agents, God sends angels to fight in invisible places. God sends angels to fight Satan on our behalf. God sends angels to fight demonic forces who come to lure us with their deceptive powers. That's why we have to be careful not to get into the spirit realm without being very prayerful. So very easily we can get caught up in witchcraft, caught up in horoscopes and psychic phenomenon. It may seem in innocent for a little while, but it's dangerous because there are spirits that work in this invisible realm that we cannot see. We see a glimpse of warfare in Daniel chapter 10 where Daniel prays and God immediately hears a Daniel's prayer. It says for 21 days Daniel prayed and God answered Daniel. Uh, but there was a hindrance to uh, Daniel's prayer being answered immediately. The Bible says that the prince of Persia a force that was invisible to Daniel was fighting against God, which implicates that Satan was fighting against God. Uh, but Daniel kept praying. Daniel kept trusting God. Daniel kept believing in God's promises. The first point I submit to you is that Daniel was faithful. 
uh, Daniel, uh, the text, verse number one, tells us that uh, Daniel has lived in captivity in Babylon. He's lived in Persia as a slave. Uh, for we learn early in the book of Daniel that King Nebuchadnezzar uh, has invaded uh, the land of Israel and took out the cream of the crop out of Israel. And out of that, uh, living in exile, we find uh, Daniel and three of his friends, Shachrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, Daniel, in spite of living in a foreign land, living in a strange land, living in a pagan land, living under the thumb of Nebuchadnezzar, still is faithful. He still prays, he still trusts God, he still believes that God is going to do great works for the Hebrew nation. In this passage, we see Daniel displaying faithfulness. He prays fervently while in a foreign land, while his people are away from the promised land. Daniel prays to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And because of Daniel's faithfulness, God gives Daniel a vision. God gives Daniel a vision. He has a vision of what is to come. He has a vision of what God is doing in the cosmic. He has a vision of what God is doing in the spiritual realm. He has a vision of what God is getting ready to do. He has a vision and Daniel prays and God gives him a vision. Uh, God gives him a vision because he's faithful. And, I, and I've come to the conclusion, God is not concerned about how much money we have. Uh, God is not concerned about the car we drive, the house we live in, the education we have. Uh, God is not too concerned about our shout and how loud we pray. God is concerned about our faithfulness. Uh, God desires more than anything that we're faithful. Uh, we're faithful while we're broke. That we're faithful while we sick. Let me ask the question. Can you remain faithful during the hard times? Can you remain faithful when trouble comes to your door? Can you remain faithful when others have left you? When people have forsaken you, talking against you? Can you remain faithful when you've lost your job? When it seems like obstacles will not go away? Daniel, uh, the Bible tells us, is faithful. He prays and uh, he believes that God is about to do something. That any day now that the people of Israel will be free. He prays and God gives him a vision. What is this vision? The text tells us uh, that Daniel receives a vision of Israel's future. Uh, verse number one, it says in the third year of Cyrus... Daniel, who was a slave whose name now is Belshazzar, uh, received a message from God. And it was concerning Israel that soon it was distressing, it was mind boggling for Daniel that soon war was about to break out. It showed Israel's future. This was not. Daniel's first vision because of his faithfulness early in chapter 1 and 2 and later in the book of Daniel God gives Daniel vision after vision but this one was distressing it was showing the end time it was showing what will happen to those who are unfaithful it was showing what God was going to do in the future in chapter 10 Daniel who is faithful, has a vision of the future. And it distracts him. It causes him to be perplexed. And the Bible says in verse number two that because Daniel 
Daniel, this faithful servant, was complex by Israel's future uh, that he continues to pray. Verse number two, it says, uh, I received this vision for three weeks. I didn't eat any rich food. No meat or wine touched my lips. See, many of us couldn't do the next part. I didn't use any lotions at all until three weeks was over. Daniel, who is faithful, who had a vision of God, of Israel's future. Now we see faithful Daniel fasting. Daniel, for three weeks, the Bible says, fasted. He didn't eat any rich food. He didn't touch any wine. He did not put lotion on his body until three weeks had passed. Oh yes, God doesn't just want us to be faithful, but uh, the Bible tells us that certain things only come through fasting and praying. Certain things only come when we go to God in prayer and we turn over our place. When we want to win this spiritual war, when we want to overcome our spiritual battles, we not only have to be faithful, but every now and then we got to go to God in prayer yes. right. and fast. Yes. The Bible says Daniel fast in the third year of Cyrus' reign after receiving distressing news of Israel's future, Daniel fasts. He believes that God is getting ready to work on Israel's behalf, getting ready to set Israel free from Babylonian captivity. And look, Daniel fasts. He prays. He remains steadfast. He walks in the spirit. He earns for God to do something. He craves God's spirit. He desires God to meet him. He cries for God's glory to come to him. And for three whole weeks, for 21 days, he does not eat any choice meat. Does not drink of any wine. See, many of us couldn't do this. And he does not put any lotion on his body for three weeks. He fasts, the Bible tells us, by the banks of the Tigris River. Number four, he's by the banks of the Tigris River, and it was the 24th day of the first month. And, and look what the Bible says, faithful Daniel, who had a vision of God's future for Israel, who had fasted for three weeks. Now, Daniel, because of his faithfulness, because he fasted, now Daniel sees the face of God. Because he prayed without ceasing. Because he prayed and did not get faint. Because he prayed even when he was afflicted. Daniel now sees the face of God. Because he sought the Lord and God answered him. Because he humbled himself. Because he went to God sincerely. Because he went to God in prayer and through fasting. Now Daniel sees God's face. How many know something happens when you fast and pray? Something got to happen when you remain faithful. Daniel sees God's face in verse number four through six. The Bible says, while standing on the Tiger's River after three weeks of fasting on the 24th day of the first month, he looked up and he saw a man, a man dressed in linen. A belt was around his waist. He had uh, fine uh, gold on 
that bell made from upaz his body gleamed with topaz and his face shone light lightning his eyes were like flaming torches his arms and legs were bright as polished bronze and his voice sounded like a large crowd he saw a man i conclude he just didn't see any old man he saw the man 500 years before this man stepped into the earth realm god was already working on daniel's behalf because daniel was faithful because daniel fasted god sent an angel yes daniel didn't know his name but if you look at the text closely you see his linen you see the gold on his belt you see the gems on his body that his face was like lightning his eyes were like flames his legs were like polished bronze his, his voice was like the multitude yeah daniel prayed and fasted 500 years before he stepped into Bethlehem 500 years before he entered into Mary's womb we see Jesus show up for Daniel Daniel was faithful Daniel saw Israel's future it distressed him and because it distressed him he fasted and after three weeks by the banks of the Tigers River Daniel has an encounter with the Son of God and look at the text closely in verse number seven we see Daniel's friends verse number seven says I was the only one who saw the vision the people were there my friends were by the river but they didn't see the vision they didn't see the man they didn't notice what I noticed they can't testify like I can testify they can't tell it like I can tell it Daniel's friends were there don't get discouraged don't get dismayed when God has spoken to you because of your faithfulness when God has given you insight when God has given you a vision when God has given you a dream and friends don't see it family don't see it people can't understand it folks disagree with it don't give up stay faithful stay praying stay worshiping stay shouting Daniel friends Daniel's faithful he sees Israel's future and because of that God gives him a glimpse of his face and look at Daniel they not only don't see it but when Daniel starts worshiping they run and hide and they fled in terror verse number eight so I was left alone as I watched this great vision look at the text closely I felt weak my eyes turned as pale as death I was helpless then I heard the man speak as I listened to him I fell asleep my face towards the ground uh, Daniel sees God's face his friends don't see it and they run in fear and look at Daniel after fasting after seeing his friends leave him after his friends forsake him uh, we see that now Daniel 
is fatigued. Yes, Daniel is tired. It's okay in this Christian journey to get fatigue. Verse number eight, Daniel falls out. And I've learned that when God has spoken to you, when you've experienced the face of God, when God has spoken dreams that only God can speak, when God has given you vision from heaven, the best thing to do is just to fall out. When you can't shout, when you can't pray, some of the best thing you can do is just go prostrate on the ground and fall down on your knees like Daniel and give God praise. Daniel is fatigued. He falls asleep. His friends have left him. He falls to the ground. But look at the text. Verse number 10. Verse number 9. I heard the man speak. I listened to him. I fell asleep. My face was towards the ground. Look at verse number 10. And a hand touched me. I was down. My friends had left me. I was fatigued. I've been faithful and look at God he touches me how many know that it's nothing like a touch from heaven it's nothing like when God touches you oh there's healing in the touch of God oh yes you can be sick and when God touches you something got to happen is there anybody in here who's been touched by the finger of God? Who can testify in the comment section? I know what it's like to be touched. I know what it's like for God to reach down from heaven and touch my body. For I was sick and on my way to death, but something touched me. How many know that God is still touching? All you have to do is ask God to touch me. I wish I had some witnesses in here who can declare and have been touched by God and can declare, God, touch me another time. God, touch my body. God, touch Week Street. God, touch my children. God, touch my wife. God, touch my husband. Touch me. What I like about God, that if you can't get a touch from God, just be like the woman with the issue of blood yeah daniel is on his knees if god ain't touching you right now i dare you to be like the woman with the issue of blood and like daniel who's on the ground and just reach stretch out your hands and watch god do miraculous things once you reach out stretch and touch him he will do great things he will do powerful things he will do extraordinary things he will heal your body he will touch your finances am i preaching to anybody today look at verse number Verse number nine, I was to the ground. My face was prostrate to the ground. My face was before God. I seen the face of God and now my face is on the ground. And verse number 10, he touched me. And look what happens when he touched me. After I fasted, after I've been faithful, after I've seen his face, after my friends had left me, now he is forcing me up. He's uh, pulling me up. He's lifting me up. And verse number nine, he's on the ground with his face to the floor. But look at verse number 10. He's standing, sitting on his hands and knees. And now Daniel is in fear. Because he heard the voice, the man said, Daniel, you're highly respected. 
on his knees, he hears the voice of God. And look what he does. He begins to tremble. He begins to be afraid, and the voice comforts him. Verse number 12, if you ain't close your Bibles, it says, the voice said, don't be afraid, Daniel. You've decided to get more knowledge, more understanding. You made yourself humble. You worship God. And since the first day you did those things, your words were heard. And, I, and I've come to you for an answer. Uh, but the prince of Persia opposed me for 21 days. In other words, this angel, the son of God is telling Daniel, you prayed three weeks ago. You prayed 21 days ago. You prayed three Sundays ago. I would have shown you that your prayers were answered then. But there was some fighting I had to do in the spirit realm. You couldn't see it, but I heard you. But I had to fight Satan, the king of Persia. And I've come to explain this vision to you. I will tell you what will happen to your people. The vision shows what will take place in the days to come. Oh, brothers and sisters, uh, this text goes on to tell us uh, that Daniel was told by God that I've been fighting on your behalf for a long time. There's been a fight in heaven for your soul. I've been fighting for you, Daniel. You couldn't see it. You didn't know it. But because you fasted and because you saw my face, because you've been faithful. Yeah, I've been fighting for you. I've been fighting demonic forces. I've been fighting satanic forces. I've been fighting people who prayed against you, Daniel. I've entered into a spiritual warfare for you, Daniel. Because of your faithfulness, I've been fighting on your behalf. I've been fighting your battles. Yeah, I've been fighting on your side. How many know that God will fight our battles? That we'll remain faithful and trust in the Lord. God will fight our battles. That if we keep on believing and standing on his word, God will go to war for us because of our faithfulness. I wish I had some faithful listeners in here who can declare that God is faithful. Even when I've been unfaithful, God has been faithful. That God was faithful. While I was a sinner lost in sin, God is faithful. Even when I didn't want to faithfully worship God, when I didn't want to faithfully praise God, God was still faithful. He was so faithful that he sent his only begotten son who was also faithful. Philippians says that he was so faithful, so obedient to the point of death that he was obedient and faithful to die on Calvary, to die a sinner's death, to hang there all night Friday, all day Saturday, and to get up early Sunday morning. And because of that, God has given him a name that is above all names. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Do I have company in here today? Isn't it Lord today? 
any Lord over your life, any Lord over your church, any Lord over your home, any Lord over your city, if he's Lord over your life, give God some faithful praise. Give God some faithful worship. Shout hallelujah. Bible says yes, yes. that the angel told uh, Daniel yes. uh, I be touched them again Jesus. he says Daniel you highly respected be strong yes. uh, you now have strength yes. I got to tell you something Daniel because of God's faithfulness and because you've been faithful because you fasted and prayed because you saw my face even when your friends deserted you you didn't get discouraged you didn't throw in the towel but you kept on praying kept on worshiping God I see on your knees and on your hands stand up Daniel you now have strength you now can celebrate you now can shout. You now can dance. Because you've already won. Because you didn't know that while you were fasting, while you were praying, while you were trusting, while you were believing, I sent an angel, not just any angel, a fighting angel, a angel who don't mind going into war, an angel who don't mind going to warfare. I'll fight your battles. All you have to do is trust me. All you have to do is believe in me. And I want to tell you, Daniel, the fight was fixed. You were going to win anyway because I fought your battles. How many know that when God is fighting, on your behalf when God is fighting on We Street's behalf when God is fighting for your children God can't help but to win because the fight was fixed on Calvary say yes say yes yes Give God praise. Shout hallelujah. This fight is not yours. It's the Lord. This battle is not yours. It's the Lord. Shout glory. Shout hallelujah. Door of the church is open. God wants you to win your spiritual battles. St stay faithful. God is faithful. He's a faithful God. Faithful, faithful is our God. Great is thou faithfulness. New mercies every day. Morning, noontime, springtime. And harvest winter God is faithful and we want you to experience this faithful God to touch this God who is so faithful and to allow God to touch you to allow God to come into your space to show his face Men of our story, it's not like Daniel. We haven't always been faithful. But God has been faithful. And God wants to show you, my brother, my sister, that God is faithful to you even while we're yet sinners. God wants to show you his love by revealing his face. 
by showing up in your life right when you're in the midst of battle. God wants to fight your battles. The problem is that we've been trying to fight the battles on our own. But God says, just be still. Trust in me. I'll send Michael to fight your battles. I'll send angels. I'll send Jesus to fight your battles. And that we serve has never lost a battle. Never lost in a fight never have lost in a war and i want you to come to know this god to come to know jesus christ as your personal savior my arms are stretched out wide that's to welcome you into this body we welcome you into the body of christ today we've been praying we've been fasting for your arrival and when you write, receive right there in the comment section. We're going to rejoice and celebrate that God has saved your life. If you don't know Jesus, my arms are stretched wide open. I wish I could hug you. I wish I could welcome you in person, but God is right there with you, right where you are. There's angels camped around you who want to welcome you into the kingdom of heaven. If I'm speaking to you, if you don't know Jesus, never been baptized, our hands are extended. We welcome you today to become a part of the kingdom of heaven. Where God will fight your battles, where God will save your life. Give your life to Jesus. You'll never be the same. Let him touch you. Why don't you stretch out your arms just like I am and reach out and touch him. Oh, that's love. Now I extend the invitation to those without a church home. If you backslidden and if You've gone away from the body of Christ. You once were a part of the church. Once was a member of Wheat Street. I, I, I give you a personal invitation. Don't worry about the past. Don't, don't worry about what happened. Don't, don't worry about the friends who left you. Don't worry about the mistreatment. It's not about them. You're seeking God's face. You're showing God how faithful you are. You're thanking God for his faithfulness. I invite you right now. To come be re-baptized. To become baptized for the first time. Some boy, some girl, don't wait until we're back in church to get baptized. Don't wait until this pandemic is over. You may not make it to become a part of the body of Christ. Give your life to Jesus and come and be a part of the Wheat Street Baptist Church. God wants to love you. God wants to nurture you. God wants to grow you right here. God wants to feed you Sunday by Sunday. God wants to bless you with his power. Come. If you desire prayer, as the choir sings, that's love. If you desire prayer, Right in the comment section, prayer. We have deacons, we have associate ministers. Even I will pray for you right now. We'll call you right now. We'll pray with you. We'll pray for you. We'll go into a battle plan. We'll fight the battles against you together with God's help. If you need prayer today, don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. You desire salvation church membership now's the time come on give God praise at this place come on let's give him praise
Sounds mighty good in here. Yes, yes. yes. That God's yes. blood yes. never yes. ever loses his power. Yes. Come on. Every first Sunday, God's people called the Wheat Street Baptist Church have gathered together to experience Hallelujah. the blood. Yes. To experience God's power. To experience God's wonder-working power. We celebrate God's power. We celebrate God's death. We celebrate that he died on Calvary, but he didn't remain dead. The Bible says on the third day he got up with power. But that's not how the story ends. The Bible says that he's coming back with all power. 
So we celebrate this Lord's Supper. Yeah. I thank God that the pandemic didn't stop us from having communion. No. no. Corona didn't stop us yeah. from having the Lord's Supper. Yeah. So as you gather your elements, gather your family, let's praise God that God has sustained us. God has kept us. God has loved us. The night in which our Lord and Savior was betrayed. Jesus took the bread. And he blessed the bread. Let us pray our Father, our God. We thank you today. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your gentleness. We praise you today because of grace. We praise you today because of mercy. We thank you for the saints who remain on the battlefield for the Lord, who gone on to be with the Lord, but they kept trusting God, kept believing in God. We thank you for the saints who've gone on to heaven who's standing over the balcony of heaven cheering us on right now we we thank god for the wheat street baptist church we thank you for every pastor god we thank you that before you died for our sins you blessed us you held us in your hands And you blessed us with your love. You blessed us over and over again. And we're grateful today. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you will forgive us of all of our sins. God, we approach this table as sinners, but we are saved by your grace. We ask right now that you will turn this carnal use and transform it to a spiritual use God through your power through the Holy Spirit transform this bread transform this fruit of the vine to a spiritual use and God remind us that Jesus lives in us. And Jesus rests in us. And we're so grateful. And we're so thankful. In Jesus' name we pray. He took the bread. He blessed the bread. Then Jesus Broke the bread. Yes, yes. Aren't you glad he didn't let you fall? You almost fell, but God caught you right in the midst and right on time. He blessed the bread. He broke the bread and he said, This is my body, which is broken for you as often as you eat of this bread do it in remembrance of me and that's what God is doing to us he's he's blessing us he's breaking us but look what Jesus did next he distributed the bread Likewise, he took the cup. Yes, he, yes. he said, this cup represents the new covenant. Hallelujah. This represents my blood. Hallelujah. As often as you drink of this cup, you do it in remembrance of me and for the remission of your sins. 
let us take let us eat of his body and of his blood And the Bible says that after they partook of the Lord's Supper that Jesus and the eleven left the upper room and made their way to the Mount of Olives, the Garden of Gethsemane, praising God. Let's do likewise. Let's praise God. And give God thanks for what God is doing. Let's give God praise for what God will do. Let's give God praise for what God has done. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout hallelujah.